All right. So Steve says book five has my head spinning a bit going back to chapter one. Was Aristotle saying that if you're deficient in any of the other virtues, you're also guilty of the vice of injustice? No, he's, a, he's not saying that. Um, so to begin with, let's make a couple distinctions. Deficient in a virtue doesn't mean that you're vicious. It means that you're in between vice and virtue, right? You lack the virtue. It would be better for you to have the virtue, but you're not necessarily at the other extreme. And um, you don't have to have every single one of the virtues in order to be just in relation to other people with respect to a virtue, right? You could be courageous, but not temperate. Or you could um, be witty, but not uh, truthful. And you're, you know, it's not an all or nothing kind of affair, right? Um, that would be more like the Stoics, or at least the Stoics in theory, because in practice, this all or nothing kind of thing is very, very tough to, to apply. It um, tends to demoralize people more than inform them. Oh, here we go. So George says this notion of dessert with Aristotle is interesting. Does he mean that given a certain standard to equalize both parties of exchange, you give people what they deserve, and this standard is based either on Democrats, aristocracy, etc.? So the standard, depending on what we're talking about, could be based on the political form, right? But it doesn't have to be. So when we're thinking about the marketplace, that may be totally independent of whether you're in a democracy, an oligarchy, a tyranny, whatever. Um, that has more to do with like who has political office, who gets to hold positions, who gets to serve on juries. For those of us in America, uh, we you know often try to get out of jury duty. Uh, for the ancient Greeks, it was a great thing to be able to serve on a jury, right? Um, so there has to be some sort of standard if we're going to talk about um, proportionality. People often don't agree on which standard ought to be applied. Now, So Allison has a great question here. Does it follow that Aristotle would not see a pacifist as being just if they are not abiding the law and refuse to join up to fight for their country? Uh, yes, Aristotle would say that if you are the kind of person who should be fighting for your country, that um, refusing to do so would be being unjust. And this is a great example. You might be violating the law, right? But you're also leaving your country people in the lurch. You're avoiding dangers that some other poor bastard is going to have to take on in your place. And you're also being a coward. So you're being a coward, not just in relation to you, but in relation to others, perhaps the people that you should be protecting, the other person whose place, uh, who the other person who has to step into your place and uh, take on the dangers. So now Aristotle would say, of course, who has to serve? Um, it's not slaves. It's not women, it's not children, it's not resident aliens like himself. Um, it's people who are full citizens, right? And if you're too poor to afford armor, um, you know, maybe you can be uh, in the light infantry, um, but you're definitely not going to be out there on the battlefield as a hoplite because every hoplite had to supply his own weapons and armor, right? So it's, it's kind of a, a very small, restricted set of the citizenry. But if you're in that bunch, yes, Allison, um, Aristotle would say if you're like, oh, no, I'm a pacifist, I'm not going to hurt anybody, you're actually doing wrong, which we might find, um, you know, jars with our conception of like conscientious observers in places where we do have people who are allowed not to serve in the military, um, very often they have to do some other kind of service as a substitute for that, right? Or they might, for example, like uh, many people who were pacifists in World War I or World War II, serve instead of being like um, battlefield soldiers, be battlefield ambulance drivers or medics or something like that. So there's a lot of different ways to, to go about this, right? Um, and we might extend this. This is a great question because we might extend this to other things that people try to avoid 
leaving other people in the lurch. And I'll, I'll bring up a very interesting uh, example. I don't want to take too much time, but my mother's family, the Lemrises, got into the United States because of the institution during the, the American Civil War of higher soldiering, which meant that if you got drafted and you had money, you could pay somebody else to take your place. My great, great grandfather was one of those guys. He crossed the border into Vermont where a doctor had his son who had been conscripted and for $500, which was a ton of money at that time, uh, took his place, didn't get killed, settled down in uh, New England. Eventually the family moved to, to Chicago. Um, now, would that be just? Aristotle would say yes. And the reason he would say yes is because of the monetary exchange. If the doctor's son had tricked him into taking his place or the doctor's son had, had simply said, I'm not serving, you are going to serve in my place, then it would have been unjust. So kind of interesting how these things work. Let's take uh, Allison's example of a pacifist who says, I'm not going to go serve out there on the battlefield. Um, equity might say, okay, um, we'll let you do that. Strictly speaking, the law says that we ought to um, beat the crap out of you, maybe whip you a bit and throw you in prison for a while and take away your goods. We're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to let you, you're not going to fight, but we'll let you build galleys, right? Or we'll let you cook food for the soldiers or do something along those lines. Oh, we've got a good uh, question here from, from uh, Nicole. Similar to Allison's point, but this assumes that the war is just and the people above are good. For example, citizens who refuse to conduct human atrocities would be just. So yes and no. Aristotle is not assuming that the war is just. Um, he's saying that you have to serve in the war and he's not particularly concerned whether the war is just or whether the people above are good, you can still behave justly in an unjust war, right? You can serve as you're supposed to serve. You can protect your comrades. You can keep the enemy from retaliating against you. Um, now, citizens who refuse to conduct atrocities would be just, yes. And you, and you could do that even in a just war, right? A war, so, I mean, this is a big topic, right? There's an entire field out there called just war theory that makes a number of different distinctions. Like, you know, is the cause for war just? Is the conduct of the war just? And you can be in an unjust war and behave justly. You can be in a just war and behave unjustly as well. So there's not a neat coincidence be between those things. Allison says, up until fairly recently, blasphemy was a crime here in Ireland written into the Constitution. So some viewers were calling for Stephen Fry to be prosecuted because he said on TV that he didn't believe in God. That's a curious one, because merely saying that you don't believe in God, to me, doesn't rise to the level of blasphemy, right? Blasphemy is when you're saying stuff that's clearly derogatory about God, you know, like... God sucks. Maybe that could be very, very mild blasphemy, right? Or blasphemy could also be uh, speaking um, uh, facetiously about uh, religious things. You know, the um, the French Canadians, by the way, are very well known for engaging in blasphemy in their swearing. You know, they say calice, which means chalice, or tabernacle, which means tabernacle, right? And these are swear words, sort of like, you know, shit and damn here in English, right? Um, imagine that somebody, uh, oh, okay, so Allison says he, he did say he didn't believe because God caused the suffering in the world. It still doesn't strike me as blasphemy. Uh, sounds like a um, giving a claim and giving an argument for that claim. Um, but I'm sure there's some some you know people who wanted to have him uh, prosecuted for blasphemy because they've got a super super wide range of this. And this is where we got to think about like the application of a law, right? Uh, we're going to talk about this a little bit later. Sometimes laws can be set up poorly, as Aristotle mentioned. And then we have to think about, well, when would when did we apply these? What do they apply to? 
how should the penalty uh, you know, work in these sort of cases. So justice. So uh, David says, do a lot of our favorite stories, if not most, play out Aristotle's use of the distinction between the just versus the unjust. Robin Hood is a good one. Robin Hood, for those who are maybe not familiar with it, is a noble guy who robs the rich and benefits the poor as a result using their very money. Um, what would Aristotle make of Robin Hood? Um, you know, just robbing the rich per se, I don't think Aristotle would be cool with that. I think he'd say you need to rob the evil rich in order for it to have some, some uh, possibility of it doing justice, right? Um, things. Going back to David's questions, um, do a lot of our favorite stories play out Aristotle's use of the distinctions, and it's distinctions plural, because notice we've got a lot of different kinds of justice between the just and the unjust. I mean, I don't know that a lot of our stories necessarily reference Aristotle, and they may in fact be um, kind of mixed up about what justice is in a way that Aristotle could perhaps inform them. I will say that a lot of the conflicts in good narratives are often driven by people being confused about what's just or unjust and then misinterpreting each other and viewing the other as more unjust than they are. This is what allows to set up big conflicts, right? So equity is a case-by-case case kind of thing. Um, Nicole says, uh, would Caesar crossing the Rubicon be an example of this? I, I don't think so. Uh, that, that's a deliberate you know, choice on his part. It's not really a uh, matter of the law. I mean, you could say that he was, he was told to um, comply with the dictates of the Senate. He chose not to, thereby starting what he knew would be a civil war. I mean, I don't think you can... Equity is something that you don't apply to yourself. You apply it to other people, you know? Um, so Caesar satisfying his own desire to remain in power by, you know, effectively declaring war on, on the Roman people and the Senate that doesn't really strike me as equitable. Um, he was supposed to have been somebody who is fairly forgiving. Um, I mean, you could look at his proposal to extend amnesty to Cato, who killed himself rather than allow that to be the case, as perhaps um, a case of equity. Um, but crossing the Rubicon, I, I, don't, I don't really think so. Um, Nicole says a thief who is broke commits less injustice than a thief who likes stealing for the sake of stealing. So yes and no. It depends on how we're looking at it. If we're looking at it in terms of those four things that I, I said, um, yeah. I mean, Aristotle would also say, why is this thief broke? Is that their own damn fault? You know, uh, that's very different than somebody who is tricked into losing their life savings or who exists in a country where hyperinflation, like in Argentina, destroyed people's life savings several times. Um, I mean, something similar is happening in Turkey too, right? So uh, yeah, Aristotle would make a distinction between those, those sorts of things. George says, if I had a friend who told me that they were a vegan and we decided to buy lunch together and they asked me to give them vegan food, but I deliberately decided to give them food I normally eat, which is not vegan. They call me out on it. I decide to downplay their concerns. Am I acting in an unjust manner? Yeah, I, I think you are. You know, I think this case illustrates an inconsiderate person. What would Aristotle say? Um, yeah, I mean, you're... I think you're acting in, in an unjust manner, not least because as we pointed out um, when we were talking about um, the social virtues in the last session, Aristotle says that telling people truth, not just about yourself and your accomplishments, but in general, is a matter of justice, right? So lying to somebody who has some pretty strongly held principled ethical beliefs about you know not creating or not or about minimizing animal cruelty by living a plant-based lifestyle. Um, yeah, I think that 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 could be injustice, right? 
Um, and you could ask, what's your motive? Were you like this? These freaking vegans, they're such a hassle, you know, so hard to, to, um, appease, right. Uh, you know, they're going to worry in this restaurant, whether there's like a drop of bacon fat or a bit of honey in it or something like that. That's one thing going about it and saying, I'm going to trick the vegan because I hate veganism. That would be, that'd be a very different disposition, I think. Right. So, yeah. Um, and then there could be something lighter where you're like, oh, I just forgot, you know, um, I didn't, I didn't realize, you know, the, the, they bring this thing and you both eat it and you're like, oh, this is really tasty. And then the, the waiter is like, um, yeah, you know, the, the bacon fat in that is the special ingredient. You're like, oh, I didn't know. Right. That would be, that'd be a very different kind of, uh, disposition at play. So, so those are good questions.